Janssen Pharmaceutica Janssen Pharmaceutica is a pharmaceutical company headquartered in Beers, Belgium and owned by Johnson & Johnson. It was founded in 1953 by Paul Janssen. In 1961, Janssen Pharmaceutica was purchased by New Jersey-based American corporation Johnson & Johnson, and became part of Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceutical Research and Development J &J PRD, now renamed to Janssen Research and Development JRD which conducts research and development activities related to a wide range of human medical disorders, including mental illness, neurological disorders, anesthesia and analgesia, gastrointestinal disorders, fungal infection, HIV AIDS, allergies and cancer. Janssen and Ortho McNeil Pharmaceutical have been placed in the Ortho McNeil Janssen Group within Johnson & Johnson. History The early roots of what would become Janssen Pharmaceutica date back to 1933. In 1933, Constant Janssen, the father of Paul Janssen, acquired the right to distribute the pharmaceutical products of Richter, a Hungarian pharmaceutical company, for Belgium, the Netherlands and Belgian Congo. On October 23, 1934, he founded the NV Product and Richter in Tornhout. In 1937, Constant Janssen acquired an old factory building in the Statia Strat 78 in Tornhout for his growing company which he expanded during World War II into a four-story building. Still a student, Paul Janssen assisted in the development of paracetamol, USP, acetaminophen, often referred to generically under the trademark Tylenol, under the name Verdolin, which would later become well known. After the war, the name for the company products was changed to Upharma, although the company name Richter would remain until 1956. Paul Janssen founded his own research laboratory in 1953 on the third floor of the building in the Statius Strat, still within the Richter Year Pharma company of his father. In 1955, he and his team developed their first drug, neomaritine, embucetamide, an antispasmodic found to be particularly effective for the relief of menstrual pain. On April 5, 1956, the name of the company was changed to NV Laboratoria Pharmaceutica C. Janssen, named after Constant Janssen. On April 27, 1957, the company opened a new research facility in Beers, but the move to Beers would not be completed until 1971 to 1972. On May 2, 1958, the research department in Beers became a separate legal entity, the NV Research Laboratorium C. Janssen. On October 24, 1961, the company was acquired by the American corporation Johnson & Johnson. The negotiations with Johnson & Johnson were led by Franz Vandenberg, head of the board of directors. On February 10, 1964, the name was changed to Janssen Pharmaceutica NV and the seat of the company in Turnhout was also transferred to Beers. The company was led by Paul Janssen, Bob Stuthuisen, and Franz Vandenberg. When, in 1971-1972 the pharmaceutical production also moved to Beers, the move from Turnhout was completed. Between 1990 and 2004, Janssen Pharmaceutica expanded worldwide, and the company grew in size to about 28,000 employees worldwide. From the beginning, Janssen Pharmaceutica emphasized as its core activity research for the development of new drugs. The research department which was established in Beers in 1957, developed into a large research campus. In 1987, the Janssen Research Foundation JRF, was founded which performs research into new drugs at Pearson and other laboratories around the globe. Janssen Pharmaceutica became the Flemish company with the largest budget for research and development. Beside the headquarters in Beers with its research departments, pharmaceutical production and the administrative departments, Janssen Pharmaceutica in Belgium still has offices in Berham, Janssen Silag, a chemical factory in Gale, and Janssen Biotech in Olin. The chemical production plant in Gale makes the active ingredients for the company's medicines. In 1975, the first plant of a new chemical factory plant I was established in Gale, Plant 2 was opened in 1977, Plant 3 in 1984, and Plant 4 in 1995. In 1999 the remaining chemical production in Beers was transferred to Gale. About 80% of its active components are manufactured here. The site in Gale also manufactures about two-thirds of the worldwide chemical production of the pharmaceutical sector of Johnson & Johnson. In 1995, the Center for Molecular Design CMD, was founded by Paul Jensen and Paul Louis. In 1999, 
clinical research and non-clinical development become a global organization within Johnson & Johnson. In 2001, part of the research activities was transferred to the United States with the reorganization of research activities in the Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceutical Research Development JJPRD, organization. The research activities of the Janssen Research Foundation JRF, and the R.W. Johnson Pharmaceutical Research Institute PRI, United States, were merged into the new global research organization. A new building for pharmaceutical development was completed in Beers in 2001. In 2002, a new logistics and informatics center was opened at a new site, Beers 2. In 2003 two new research buildings were constructed, the Discovery Research Center DRC, and the Drug Safety Evaluation Center DSEC. On October 27, 2004, the Paul Janssen Research Center for Discovery Research was inaugurated. In March 2015, Janssen licensed Tipifarnib, a farnal transferase inhibitor, to Cura Oncology who will assume sole responsibility for developing and commercializing the anti-cancer drug. Later in the same month a company announced that Galapagos Pharma and regained the rights to the anti-inflammatory drug candidate GLPG-1690 as well as two other compounds including GLPG-1205, a first-in-class inhibitor of GPR-84. In May 2016, the company launched a collaboration Macrogenics in their preclinical cancer treatment, MGD-015. The deal could net Macrogenics more than $740 million. In September 2017 it was announced that Janssen teamed up with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, BARDA, a unit of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, to create pandemic flu vaccines. BARDA is giving Janssen $43 million in the first year and $273 million over five years for the contract. One of the projects in the contract is the development of a universal flu vaccine. The intent of the vaccine would be to protect people against all or most flu strains. On March 5, 2019, the Food and Drug Administration approved Janssen's Spravato, Escadamine nasal spray, for treatment-resistant major depressive disorder. This marked the first approval of a new type of antidepressant in decades. Drugs Developed Janssen Pharmaceutica has developed and brought to the market about 70 new active substances, NCE, of which the most well-known are, name may differ. Eight Janssen drugs have been included on the WHO model list of essential medicines. In China, Janssen Pharmaceutica was the first Western pharmaceutical company to set up a pharmaceutical factory in the People's Republic of China. In 1976, Paul Janssen met Mahai Bey, born George Shafiq Hatem, a Lebanese-American doctor who had started working in China in 1933. After three days of meetings, the two agreed to bring a modernized pharmaceutical business to China. When Chairman Deng Xiaoping opened China to the West in 1978, Janssen Pharmaceutica sent Paul Appermont and Jos Horsten to set up the project. In 1983, Janssen signed a cooperation contract to modernize production in an old chemical factory in the city of Hanjiang, in Shanxi province. This factory would soon produce the active compound of some Janssen products, such as mabendazole. In 1985, now operating as Shen Janssen Pharmaceuticals, a new large factory was opened in the city of Shen, also in Shanxi province. Controversies Juries in several U.S. states have found that Janssen Pharmaceutical and its parent company Johnson & Johnson deceptively promoted the antipsychotic drug Risperdal Risperidone. By 2012, four states had been awarded damages, including Louisiana $258 million in 2010, South Carolina $327 million in 2011, Texas $158 million in 2012, and most notably Arkansas $1.2 billion in 2012, whose attorney general stated, these two companies put profits before people, and they are rightfully being held responsible for their actions. In a related issue, Risperdal sales practices resulted in a 2012 provisional settlement totaling $2.3 billion. The United States Department of Justice began investigating Risperdal sales practices in 2004, and in 2010 joined a whistleblower suit alleging bribes paid to Omnicare the largest company supplying pharmaceutical drugs to nursing homes. The allegations include that Johnson & Johnson & Janssen were warned by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, not to promote Risperdal as effective and safe for elderly patients when in fact it is associated with early death.
but they did so, and that they in fact bribed Omnicare pharmacists tens of millions of dollars to promote the drug to care home physicians for this unapproved use. A settlement was provisionally agreed with Johnson & Johnson of around $2.2 billion for this and related allegations, with Omnicare having already settled for around $100 million. Former head of sales and president of Janssen, Alex Gorski, who the Department of Justice say was actively involved in the fraud, nevertheless became the new CEO of Johnson & Johnson in 2012. CEO of Johnson & Johnson in 2012.